So tonight I want to talk about very specific techniques that you can use for emotional healing. And uh, one of my favorite books that's super fun, because uh, I think emotional healing can sometimes feel very deep and um, challenging. A lot of people uh, will you know, want to actually avoid emotional healing, even though they know they need it or want it. Um, they are, a fe they fear it. And I think that it's important to share with all of you or someone that has guided people through emotional healing uh, for many, many years now, that it is a beautiful process. It is a loving process. It is a nurturing process. And there is nothing to fear. And often the fear is fear itself, as they say, but the fear is that there's, you know, something that they're not going to be able to handle if they open that can of worms, right? Um, that's typically the forethought is that, um, will I be able to handle it? Uh, or, oh my gosh, that's too much. So, like, I'd rather go golf, play golf <laughs> or go shopping or something. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to go into depth with their emotional healing. And one of the books that I think is so fun um, because I don't think emotional healing has to be heavy. It can be light and creative and playful. And I'm going to give you techniques um, that uh, you could use and that I've used to make it light and healing. But this is a book that I've cherished for uh, about 20 years, maybe more now, 23 years. And this is my actual you know, book from, the, it's that old. This is Sark. And Sark is so incredibly creative. Um, she is a woman that I learned about and when I started my personal development path about when I was about the age of 30. I'm now 51. And in this personal development path is when I decided that I was going to go deep. <laughs> I'm like, I was not liking the way my life was going. I was not enjoying, um, I, you know, it just felt like the, the rewards were not what I wanted them to be, and I felt like I wasn't living up to my potential. And that's when I started digging deep within myself to understand myself better, and that's when I found Sark. And so Sark is really, really fun. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read this book. I recommend that you order it. Um, it's something, you know, so old, but it's still available. If you notice the words, look at the way it's written. The whole book is really, really creative and fun. And it's all about living your most succulent life, which I love. <laughs> Let's live a succulent life. Ripe, juicy, whole, round, exuberant, wild, rich, wide, deep, firm, rare, and female. <laughs> That's what it says here. I love that. Um, so when I read this book, she talks about emotional healing a lot. And, you know, one of the things I think was really cool is uh, what she taught. She shares with you her path. Um, she also calls it psychological healing. And um, I think it's really fun because she, she shares, she says, I am a survivor of sibling incest, physical abuse, rape, and an almost alcoholic. I've taken most recreational drugs and been on welfare. I've attempted suicide. I've binged on food and explored my codependency. I'm moderately neurotic and am currently examining my narcissistic structure. I have tendencies to be depressed, worry, and see things negatively. Now, this is written from a national bestseller, right, author. And um, then she goes on to say, I've been rebirthed, psychologically evaluated in therapy, massaged, chakras cleared, psychically healed, had acupuncture for emotional reasons, read many, many self-help books, attended workshops, classes, talked about the inner child, the dysfunctional family, AA meetings, OA meetings, Al-Anon meetings, met with healers, listened to channelers, had out-of-body experiences, studied A Course in Miracles, I've been hypnotized, and floated in sensory deprivation tanks. <laughs> I love her honesty and transparency, and it's just so fun, and she's become a world-renowned author and artist and creative, and her succulent wild woman, this is dark right here. So I wanted to start with that so that you, you know, have Martha telling her story and Sark telling her story. And isn't it cool that we are women telling our stories? Cheers to that. <laughs> so 
I know that many of you will watch the replay and Julie, thank you so much for being here live. I'm pretty sure that I put the wrong, somehow my team, because I also had somebody, a team member help um, set up this, um, the, the emails that went out and I think we put the wrong uh, Zoom links on the emails, uh, but that's okay, we're going for it anyways. So I wanna give you really six different techniques that are all simple, easy, and doable for emotional healing. Some of them are going to be more deep and others are just gonna be light, but something that you can do practically. I really believe in healing and all of our exploration of self, as well as you know, peak performance. I want it to be practical, practical and doable so that anybody can start wherever they are and they can do what they can. I have a strong belief that all of us can become our own I can miracle. When you just choose to believe in yourself, you can become more than you ever thought you can be. You can become deeper than you ever thought you can be. It's not always about, you know, the limelight and, you know, the, what, what the world compares and tells us is success, monetary success or, you know, stature. Um, but you go as deep with yourself as you do high. Go as deep with yourself as you do high. Uh, that is totally the point of emotional healing, is the more in depth you are within yourself, really the more of an asset you do become to the people around you and to the world. And we need more people with depth. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah? All right, so here's six techniques for your emotional healing. Number one is what I call the FIT journal. And the FIT journal is an acronym, F-I-T, and that is focus inward target. So focus inside yourself and target what needs to be targeted. If you want any kind of healing or change or transcendence, this is an inner job. Now, an inner job is all about you know, exploring your interiors. Exploring your interiors. Doesn't that sound fun? I think it sounds quite adventurous, y'all. And uh, I'm up for that adventure. What about you guys? Here's some knuckles. Boom, if you are up for that adventure, give me those knuckles. Awesome. <laughs> so inside your fit journal is a journal that you keep at your bedside and to be able to wake up in the morning and write down your intentions for the day, go to bed deciding how you want to sleep and uh, deciding what you want to really implant into your subconscious mind because your subconscious is always listening to you. It's always recording your habits, your inner language that you're recycling, and it's just pulling all that information in on huge, deep levels of data. Like your data is 70,000 thoughts a day, and your subconscious is just recording the patterns, recording the patterns. It's not going to record the things that aren't patterns, but it will record the things that are. And typically, the only way to be able to break through to the subconscious and, and change a pattern is two ways, to provoke emotion and repetition. Emotion and repetition are those two things that provoke the subconscious to shift and to release and let go of something uh, repeatedly and emotionally. And that is why we're talking about this subject tonight, emotional healing, because I love teaching, educating, and sharing, and also collaborating. I wanna hear what you've got to say as well and what your techniques are on really affecting the subconscious mind. So this FIT journal is your, your space where you can focus inward and target. And I wanna give you some coaching prompts to be able to do that. Here are some things that instead of just going into your journal and writing, whatever, I would love to give you these coaching prompt questions that really can make a difference in the quality of your journaling. And so here's the very first coaching prompt. It is, I am proud of myself for having the courage to dot, dot, dot. And then you finish that sentence or paragraph or six paragraphs, whatever that might be. But it's something that you can write inside your journal I am proud of myself for having the courage to. And you know, after a day and you're in your bed at night, to be able to write out what you are proud of yourself for having the courage to do that day 
is an incredible celebration of self. It's also a process of healing because you might have worked through some fear in order to pull up that courage and impart it on an action that you did that day. And it's really important that you just you acknowledge and through acknowledge and acceptance of self is where you'll find emotional healing. Number two is what I observed about my inner thinking today is dot, dot, dot. What I observed, that's the key word. What I observed about my inner thinking today is, and this is all about being in observation versus in your thinking patterns. When you're in your thinking patterns, you're not going to notice them. You're not going to catch them when they really aren't serving you. And so you want to be in a space of observation as much as possible where you are almost third party observing how you're thinking and speaking out into the world. So much of the time, the, the people that I work with come to me with really bad thinking habits, bad as in not that they're bad, but that the thinking habits they're using are not beneficial to them. And there's a big difference between those um, you know, designations. So one is I am bad, one is I'm not serving myself in an appropriate way. So one of the things that we do is start to really uh, practice observing. So I, what I observe about my inner thinking today is, and then write, write a sentence, write a paragraph, write a whole page until you feel like you're done. But observing allows you to be in a buffer space where you can have the power to make changes. When you observe, you go, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been saying to myself. And you can kind of compassionately call yourself out um, so that you can make that shift and make that change when you recognize it. When you reveal it, then you can release it which goes me, goes, takes me to, excuse me, segue, segues to number three, um, a third question, which is who or what am I choosing to release, let go, or forgive? Who or what am I choosing to release, let go, or forgive? And again, that's a question that you just have in your journal, and that can be on the daily. Who or what am I releasing? <sighs> am I choosing to release, to let go or forgive? You can release your own. You can be forgiving yourself. You can be forgiving a family member. You can be forgiving the guy that cut you off. Um, you can be forgiving, um, you know, somebody that wronged you in some way or somebody that didn't give you the time of day and they ignored you. Uh, you know, whatever it is, this is what emotional health is. Is It's like you're growing a garden and of course, weeds are gonna grow every single day because that's just the nature of life. Um, but when you are a good cultivator, you are in your garden, working your garden on a regular basis. So the garden doesn't ever get overgrown with weeds. Uh, the weeds of resentment, the weeds of anger, the weeds of sadness, the weeds of pity, the weeds of powerlessness, those weeds can't really take root because you're in there doing the cultivating on a regular basis. You're, you're perpetuating in a cycle of emotional healing and growth on the regular. So a question like that really prompts you to recognize what needs to um, be released. And so number four, out of the five questions that you can be asking yourself, number four is, what did I make something mean that perhaps it didn't? What did I make something mean that perhaps it didn't? This question is one of my favorite questions. It is such a powerful prompt because so many times this is where we get all screwy with something that happened in our life. There was some kind of unintentional message that was filtered down to us. You've all, you all know the saying, hurt people hurt people or they did the best they can. And we're referring to parents, uh, teachers, pastors, uh, coaches, people around us, our peers, that we uh, felt like there was some, some kind of sandpaper situation that rubbed us the wrong way or something they did that did hurt us. And uh, some, it felt intentional. 
um, but maybe their intention of hurting you is because they were hurt. So this cycle perpetuates itself. Um, and we want to stop that. We want to stop generational patterns. We want to stop uh, things, attachments to our hurt, anger, and pain. And so often it's because we made it mean something that it didn't have to mean. People also do this about money. They make it mean um, the having money or the lack of money. They make it mean something that it really doesn't. Giving it more power than it actually deserves. You are the power behind the money, not the money itself. Money really has no power. It is the power and intention behind it. So it's always people that give money power, not, pow not money in and of itself. Um, it is a currency that gets exchanged. And so therefore the exchange happens between humans, right? And businesses that are run by humans. And so it's really the power behind that that make, gives the money power. Of uh, food, often people make food mean something that it doesn't. Um, you know, people go to food for emotional, to heal themselves emotionally. Uh, and physically food does actually heal you when it's nutritional and beneficial foods. It really can heal you as properties and nutrients and vitamins that can heal you. But when it's used improperly, just like money, when it's used improperly, then it can cause you, um, health issues, uh, weight gain. Um, oh my gosh, the, it goes on and on heart disease. Um, oh my gosh, we use it as a coping mechanism. It, there's so many ways that improper nutrition, uh, using food as a mechanism for healing uh, your emotional wounds, it is not capable of doing that. It is not capable of doing that. It's what you made it mean. So even when we call it like, ooh, soul food, you know, we made it mean soul food because that usually meant that we were gathered together and it was the people in the gathering that was soulful, not that food, the food is just a symbol. So isn't it interesting? Like that is a very, 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 very powerful question to be asking yourself. What did I make it mean that perhaps it didn't? So that allows you to release. It allows you to detach from something that's grap grapping at you. Grap grapping, is that a word? Um, grasping at you or grabbing at you. I was combining words. Number five. And then we'll move on to the next technique. Number five is what can I think, feel, or do today to be fulfilled? What can I think, feel, or do today to be fulfilled? And this is a, a great fit journal question because so often we are projecting into the future. When I get that raise, I'll feel fulfilled. When I weigh that certain weight, then I'll feel fulfilled. When I am emotionally healed, then I'll feel fulfilled. When I heal my inner child, then I'll feel fulfilled. Um, when I'm in that relationship that I so desperately desire, then I'll feel fulfilled. When I get to that, when I buy that house, then I'll feel fulfilled. Like it can just go on and on, right? So um, we want to bring it back to the now. What can I think, feel, or do today to be fulfilled? This is about being powerful in your presence and choosing to take actions in your day of thinking actions. How am I gonna think today? What am I gonna do for someone else to, to feel fulfilled? Um, what, because knowing that fulfills me, right? And, and then sometimes you do it just because you know it's, it's just the right thing to do, not because you're getting something back out of it. But what are you doing to take ownership of your own fulfillment today? Today, it's a powerful question. So that's number one is those different coaching prompts. And I'm happy to um, send these out as well in an email. I'll do that. I'll send it out in an email to all of you uh, with these questions so that you can enter them into your journal. One of the things I'm working on too is releasing uh, a made for you fit journal that has those uh, coaching prompts in them that you can be reflecting through on a daily basis. And if any of you are, that, think that sounds awesome, let me know that you think it's awesome. I'd love to hear that feedback if you think that would be a useful uh, product for you. Um, number two for emotional healing is all about connection. So it can be um, connection through relationships or actual connection as an actual touch and hugs, 
um, massage. These we need touch and connection in our lives. Um, that touch it is extremely healing for us. And so, if you haven't been touched in a while, go get a massage. It is so incredibly emotional healing. Uh, also, hug yourself. There's been times that it is so necessary for me to hug myself. And I want you just to practice right now and get past any feelings of silliness. Just give yourself a hug. <sighs> Close your eyes. Give yourself a hug. And I really notice that embrace. Really feel it. Really feel it. Give yourself a pat on the back. Good job today. Good job today. Mm. <laughs> you can also go hug a tree, right? We, we tend to um, put, make fun of people hugging trees, but there's something to that. There really is. Go hug a tree. Hug nature. That, that touch has been um, studied for years that we need that emotional connection. A lot of times as women, we have uh, used it against ourselves as well in form of sex where we feel desperate uh, for emotional connection and we're willing to give our body for that emotional connection. Um, and it has backfired on us, right? I know that has happened to me, uh, especially you know, in my years before getting married where I was given that away uh, for, you know, to heal my daddy issues. And uh, luckily, yay, I did heal those daddy issues. Uh, but it took a number of years, and I know I was looking for love in all the wrong places. And so that intimacy um, can be really, really it's so important in our lives. It's just, it's up there as one of the top ranking things we need to thrive is intimacy. And, uh, you know, my mom, uh, she said to me in her dying days, literally, uh, when I went to visit her one day, and she had eaten all the the food, or excuse me, she had had a plate of food on her hospital tray, and she had eat, not touched any of the healthy items and only ate the apple pie. And yet she was obese, unhealthy. She had not taken care of herself. That's why she was in the hospital, and she was also in depression. And when I said to her, Mom, how come you didn't eat the healthy food? That's why you're in here. You need to eat the healthy food. And my coaching hat daughter came on, and she immediately just sneered back. She said, Deanna, when you haven't had sex in 27 years, apple pie tastes really good. In her snarky way, she said that. And, uh, you know, I do this work, and I was doing this work then, and it was very telling. She was not someone that shared emotion. She was, she was very closed off woman, and that was always tension in our relationship. She, she, she had a hard time being warm. Um, and so she showed love in other ways. She showed love through baking and she showed love through money. And so um, there, she had a lot of control over those types of things. And not to go any further into my mom, but to tell you that one little story about, you know, for her, she was getting her emotional needs met through food, specifically through sweets and, and pastries. She had done it my entire life. And I used to always think, well, she could lose weight if she just we could get the it hurt her to ease off on the pastries, you know, because she couldn't stick ever to any kind of healthy eating program. And she had been on so many diets. I can't even tell you, like literally just dozens of them and um, just couldn't release that uh, food, you know, that connection to needing sweets. And she always said, well, I have a sweet tooth. Well, when now we know what her sweet tooth was about. It was actually that she wasn't getting her emotional needs met. She wasn't getting intimacy. And so she wasn't willing, apparently, I didn't know this. She wasn't willing to put herself out there and get those emotional needs met. And I didn't learn about it until it was too late. It was too late. She was already, she died two weeks later after she told me that. So, you know, I could carry on this work um, in her name and, in, in, you know, the love for humanity. And it is my greatest, you know, desire and honor to be a part of helping you to get your emotional needs met. So that's number two is, you know, give yourself a damn hug when you need it. Find a way to get that hug in a beneficial way. Hug a tree, uh, <laughs> hug yourself, whatever you need to fulfill those emotional needs, but acknowledge that they need to be met. 
in beneficial ways. And there's, there's ways to, to meet your needs other than coping mechanisms because it, ultimately it doesn't work. Ultimately, it's very temporary. And so take that um, gift for yourself to honor yourself so deeply and value yourself so deeply that you do actually extend those opportunities to get your emotional needs met. Number three is uh, using the gift of psycho psychological reframing. So when you have that inner voice that is constantly perpetuating perhaps negative things about yourself or about situations outside of yourself, constant worry or concern, start to notice how you can flip the script around that with your very languaging that's happening right there in your mind. There is so much emotional healing that can be done even just through your languaging. And I'll give you an example. Again, it's my mother. <laughs> She's taught me so much unintentionally. Uh, and it was the, she was the very reason that made me get into hypnotherapy in this, in this line of work in the first place. So we'll give her that. Um, one of the things that she said to me as a, as a teenager that affected me deeply on an emotional level was in, when we were in a heated moment, having an argument, she said to me as she pointed her finger, you will never amount to anything. And I took that oh, affirmation personally, and I internalized it like, insert negative affirmation about self, cheap, you know, into, the, into my head. And I can be flippant and sort of silly about it now, but let me tell you, it was not effing silly for many, many years. It dictated what I did or did not do and how I felt about myself. And that is something that is where we need to, uh, for you, I want you, I share this story so that you see in yourself perhaps what has happened in your life that you just, it's time to let it go. Um, and let's all make an agreement right now that we have each other's back. I'm giving you high fives. I'm giving you knuckles. I'm giving you hugs that you have permission to let it go now. Permission to let it go. Be like, I put in your name, insert name. I now hereby give myself permission. Give me blank, put in your name, <laughs> permission to heal. Permission to let that shit go. I give myself that permission. It is so important for emotional healing. So one of the things that I did, I used that phrase that she said to me, and I reframed it in my mind and my heart. So I would do a meditation just around that phrase, and I would picture my mom silent. So she no longer had her finger up. She had dropped her hand, and she became silent. And then I put in a new voice, a calm, serene, beautiful voice, as if it was coming from her. And it says, Deanna, you amount to everything. So we went from, you will never amount to anything, to you amount to everything. You amount to everything. And so what I would do is I close my eyes, I would get in that hug, you know, position, and I would meditate and picture, I, was, I would use my visualization to picture my mom saying those words to me, you amount to everything. And I flipped the script. I encourage you to do the same on those things that need to be healed within you. And I'm going to actually touch point on this again at the end. Um, number four is to... Take your healing outside. Take your inner healing outside. This is one of the things that Sark recommends in her book, and it's so obvious, but you know, I want you to actually never underestimate the power of taking your inside healing outside uh, to the lake, to the trails, to the beach, to the mountains. Um, you know, where does it need to go? <laughs> it could be to your closest peak. Um, let's see what else I have here. Um, to a park nearby, take your inner healing outside. Nature is incredibly healing in and of itself. Maybe it's, a, if you're a city girl, maybe it's to the top of a skyscraper, like, uh, you know, in New York City, and you're at Times Square, you need to find yourself over to the tallest building, uh, or go down to One World Trade, I don't know, go to a tall building in your city and stand there and look over. 
accept your rise, agree with your rise, and go out there for your emotional healing. Feel that feeling, allow yourself to, to have it. Take your inner healing outside. Number five is uh, taking your healing to a creative process. Now that might mean painting, drawing, journaling, art, um, expressing yourself through some type of creative expression like uh, sewing, uh, knitting, carving. Uh, let's see, what can it be? My husband started working on guitars as a creative process for his healing and growth figuring them out, tinkering with them. It gave him a sense of accomplishment, a sense of doing this that felt uh, incredibly healing for him. Uh, there's you know, so many different creative ways of expressing your healing. Your healing doesn't always have to be vocal. It doesn't always have to come out of your mouth and have someone else hear you um, or acknowledge you. It can just be a process within yourself, but you do it very intentionally for your healing. So recognize that we all need a purpose. And often this type of healing process can be so purposeful. So I would encourage you to either A, recognize how maybe some of the things that you, hobbies that you took up over the years and you never recognized them as emotionally healing. You're just like, oh, I just thought I was, I was interested in that. And now you go, oh, that's right. I was going through something then. And that thing, doing that thing, that activity helped me to heal. It helped me to process. Um, so, or now moving forward, you pick something intentionally on purpose to heal. I can tell you that for me, I went running. Uh, I ran marathon after marathon after ma marathon. And for me, it was my, a process of my emotional healing. Uh, people thought, oh my gosh, why do you do that all the time? Are you just trying to be skinny? And I'm like, you have no idea what I am processing up in here. And it was amazing. Uh, so uh, every, you know, every time, um, well, not every time, sometimes it was just for training, but there was, I can think of some really emotional, poignant runs where I spent the whole run bawling my eyes out or where I spent the run recognizing that there's something that I'm working on processing and I and I, it just one step at a time kept bubbling up of what I was actually processing and choosing each step to be yes I'm taking another step and intentionalizing that and recognizing that I am overcoming right now right now literally figuratively emotionally in every way I am overcoming right now and so it was very healing number six and then we'll wrap this is the last one and it is the words for healing. Um, I have a technique here where kind of like how I asked you to reframe and flip the script, um, I'm asking you to use the power of language and words for your benefit. So here's a technique that I have found to be incredible. What is it that you needed to hear that you haven't heard? What is it you need to hear that you haven't heard? What is that? What do you need to hear that you haven't heard? Is it, you are so loved. I find you to be incredibly unique and special. I value you. Gosh, you're pretty. I've always thought you're so pretty. I really see your talents. You're incredibly talented. Wow. You really should really do something with that because I see that you are incredibly talented. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm so incredibly sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you that way. There was more happening there than you didn't, that you didn't realize. I'm so sorry. I was going through something. What are those words that you haven't heard that you really need to hear? What are those words that maybe you've been waiting a really long time to hear? This is your opportunity. I invite you to write down the words 
that you've always needed to hear. And then here's the magic. Are you ready for the magic? The magic is to take out your phone. Mine's an iPhone. Uh, lots of you have iPhones. And if you don't, I promise you still have this on your phone. One of the apps on your phone is a voice memo or a voice recording app. Hit that voice memo, hit the red button, which is always at the bottom, and record everything you wrote down. Record it in a soft, beautiful voice. Record it in a firm voice if that's what you need, an assertive voice if that's what you need. Design it how you need to hear it. Write those words down and I want you to, or not, not because I want you to, I invite you to for your own emotional healing, then listen back to those words every day for the next 30 days. It's a little challenge for you. I promise you that this incredible exercise works and all the things that you felt you always needed to hear will be said to you. Internalize them, take them in and receive them. Allow yourself to receive them. Allow them to be exactly what you needed to hear. Allow them to be good enough to hear them through that way. It is good enough to hear them through yourself. It does not have to come from another person. Let it be from you. Let you be the heroine in your own life. Let you be the shero in your own life that has finally said the words that you needed to hear. So with that, with that powerful technique is where I close here. I am um, happy always to answer any questions or to give you feedback, um, to be here uh, as a support, as a guiding light uh, for your emotional healing. And truly, when I say that, I really truly mean on all levels, like on all levels of your fitness. <laughs> to really be fit is to focus inward and target what you need to succeed. Focus in where to target what you need to succeed. So if any of you have um, questions that are watching the replay, feel free to reach out to me. You have all the information here in this uh, email that I'll send out. And uh, I'm here for your love and support. I offer coaching, ongoing coaching. I offer boost coaching where we work together for a specific amount of time with a specific goal to help you get where you want to go. I also offer year-long programs and also these Wednesday night weekly coaching calls. Check out Mind Body Fit Club and what we have to offer and helping you get, it, get fit in mind, body, and soul to live your best life. Check out the private coaching, the trainings. I come into organizations and offer trainings on this type of content, as well as the power of the subconscious mind and how you can use it to your betterment. Thank you so much. I am Deanna Nunez, signing off for tonight. Design your mind with what you need to succeed. Thank you for being here.